Hello there friend, welcome to another sculpting project of mine. As you may already know, I am making marks from the Kirby video game series. This also gives me an excuse to use up my various collection of wooden balls I've had for ages. This was one of those giant wooden beads that I plugged up with some clay. Just the size and shape I need to make this character. Using some freshly rolled slab of super sculpy medium. I will first be making his little gesture hat by rolling out a couple cone shapes. If you have been following me on my channel for a while now, then you already know I have made two other Kirby related projects in the past. And if it wasn't already obvious, yes, I am a huge fan of Kirby. I've played almost every Kirby game that was ever released. The one game that started it all for me, and was my very first Kirby game, was Kirby Superstar on the Super Nintendo. It was a collection of 8 games in one. I'm only bringing this up since the subject of today's project was first introduced in this game. I really love this character, and I was so bummed that it was never made into a toy or a figure of any type. There have been plushies, but never any figures. So feeling passionate enough, I thought why not just make my own? Now I'll be rolling out some tiny balls of clay that will later be attached to the pointed ends of his hat. With some copper wire, I will have a nice strong finish when I connect my pieces. Covering the gaps with more clay. Now rolling out two teeny tiny balls of clay for his bow tie. I'll be using the silicone mold to make the eyes. This helps me to keep the proportions the same and look symmetrical. I'm just roughly drawing a mouth on to act as a guide when attaching his feet and bow tie later on. A little more clay for some support. Some touch-ups here and there. Now I can make his feet. One thing that might not be apparent is how long it actually took me to sculpt this piece as a whole. I find sculpting basic, simple shapes harder at times. Making anything symmetrical and practically perfect requires a delicate touch and a bit of patience. Of course, working on anything small scale is challenging. It doesn't help that the perfectionist in me always strives for accuracy as much as possible. The important thing is to keep going and to never be afraid to fail. These are now all baked and I finally can start attaching it. The sculpting is now done. Cut this neat little silicone mold with hexagons in various sizes. I will use this to make my display stand to hold up marks. I also cut off a small piece of acrylic rod and making it stick with a small dab of UV resin. 
Once it sets, I can fill the bottom with more UV resin. I originally planned on adding dual tone gradient color to make the base, but I didn't like how it turned out. Keeping it clear and simple was definitely the better choice. Time to finally bring marks to life with some paint. I mixed some magenta with white to match his skin tone as close as possible. Once that's done, I can begin to go over all the necessary parts that will be white. Then brown for issues. Moving on to his accessories with blue and red. Before I finish up marks, I will apply the same colors to his bouncy ball. Need my guidelines for accuracy. Lastly, I can now finish up all the tiny, most tedious, but very important details. With everything now dry, we can now assemble. Now it's on to the final look. Making marks was a lot of fun and all, but I can't help feeling like it's missing something. Maybe there's something more I could have done, but what can that possibly be? 